Hi everyone, it's Brenda Quintana and today I'm going to share a recorded video because I'm on my way to San Francisco to see our son. He's on a work term in San Francisco just for four months and uh, we decided to go visit him for the long weekend. But I still wanted to give you a Friday video so I have a great project for you today and I know you're going to love it. Um, it holds, um, this is a super cute slider box and this holds fun size candy bars and I'll give you an idea of what it can hold in just a moment when I can open this box and not have everything fall out. Um, and on top of that, I'm going to be demonstrating a screen card that matches these really cute projects. This card's really easy to make. And then I'm gonna show you how you can put these two together and package them up in a cute little packaging so you can gift them. These cards can also be sent by mail, but I would suggest um, putting in um, a four and a quarter by five and a half piece of cardstock or something, um, wrapping a piece of paper around them because this is um, two and three quarter inches wide by five and a half. So you'll want to have something to protect the envelope a little bit. So anyway, um, I also have a host code this month. So as I'm doing these projects, if you see any supplies that you would like, um, you can order from me if you're in the US. And if you use this host code right here, I have a gift of the month and I think, oh, here we go. This is my gift of the month. It's going to be these beautiful iridescent pastel gems. You just need to spend $50 with me in the month of February and I will send you these. Also, Stampin' Up! Um, has celebration and that is going on until the end of February as well. And for every 50 or $100 you spend with Stampin' Up! you also get to pick something. So you get, if you spend $50, you get this from me and you get a gift from Stampin' Up! So it's a really good deal to still place your order in February 2023 um, to get those deals. All right, I am going to switch over my camera. Oh, one more thing before I forget. Do you want a project sheet for, for this tutorial today? Well, just make sure you're on my email list and that link can be found down below. Um, and once you subscribe, make sure you, um, when the email, once you fill out the form, you'll get an email and you'll have to say, yes, I wanna subscribe um, via email because you'll get an email sent to your inbox. Um, and then on Saturdays, I send out uh, a project sheet for my Friday tutorials. And so if you want this project sheet, make sure you are on my email list. This is the only way that you can get my uh, project sheets. Okay, let me switch over my camera and I'm gonna follow along on my project sheet to make sure I have all the correct dimensions. Okay, so let's just talk about, um, I've got different samples. So let's talk about these samples first. I use the Playing in the Rain bundle for this. And this is a, a stamp set um, with a die set that cuts things out for you. So it's a very cool bundle. It's a fun spring bundle. Um, also use the Rain or Shine designer series paper on the box and the card. So you want to see how cute this is? Like, look at this. This holds fun size candy bars. And so I got a bunch of different ones. I don't think it will fit all fun size. Like I, there's like uh, Reese's peanut cutter, butter cups. They're also called fun size. I don't know if that will fit, but these size bars, make sure you look for fun size. Look this, this is what you want, fun size. And then if they're around this shape, um, about four of these will fit into this box and it's just super cute. And I love the greeting, oh happy day, like oh happy day, I'm getting chocolates in this box. So that's kind of fun. And um, here is another box I made with the same paper. And then we've got um, the screen card that matches. So it's so fun, so cute. 
Then um, I also made this um, with a different bundle and this is the best butterflies bundle I used on this one. This one was in the, in the annual catalog and it is still available. It also has a die set that matches. So I use that die on here and also holds the same, it's the same box, holds the same type of candy. Um, and then I use um, the butterfly kisses paper on here and I stamp the butterfly from the stamp set. So you've really got a lot of different options to create these boxes. This is a great design and a great layout. It will work with a lot of different bundles, but I'm gonna show you how to make it with the playing in the rain bundle. And if you got a thank you card from me, you might recognize this one right here. Um, I made that with um, a different type of paper. Let me grab my paper. Um, so this one card, the thank you card I made um, using the Regency Park paper here. And so this is just a very versatile card that you can make and it's super cute. I'll show you how to make that after I show you how to make the box. Okay, let me pop that aside. All right, to start off with, we are going to create the box base and we're going to use our Simply Scored scoring board. And I need my stylus tool. So this, prop up my sheet again. This piece measures seven and three eighths by five and three eighths. Seven and three eighths by five and three eighths. We're going to score on all four sides at the three quarter inch mark and the one and a half inch mark. Three quarter, one and a half, three quarter, one and a half, three quarter, one and a half, three quarter, one and a half. Okay, so that's the first step. Then I'm just gonna grab a pencil here and I tell you to cut, let's see if I can show you this, what it kind of looks like. You have to cut away the three corner squares. So I'm just gonna put little X's on here so you can kind of see, these are the ones that need to go away. So you can cut those away however you like. I'm gonna show you how to do it on my paper trimmer. You could also use scissors. I'm going to do this with the long side facing me. And we'll start by uh, going to the first score line in and we're going to cut down to the second score line. So I'm going to move my blade over, line up that little line with the score line and cut. I'm going to lift this and bring this down to the other second score line and cut. Then I'm going to go to the second score line in here line it up on my score group here and cut. I'll show you what this looks like in just a moment because you can very easily also do this with scissors. So you can see I've cut up two. Um, we are going to keep this tab right here in place but these three are eventually going to um, go. But so if you cut up with your scissors just to the second score line uh, on the long side and then we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm turning the other long side towards me. And then we'll just cut up from the second score line out. Move this again. I'll show you. I like this because it really gives me nice straight lines. But if you prefer, just go ahead and use scissors. So you would just cut up, cut, 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 cut. 
And now I'm gonna turn this to the short side. Um, and I'm going to cut this outer one starting at the second score line. But this one here, we're just doing up to the first score line because I don't wanna cut this tab away right here. This tab has to remain. So I'm gonna put this back in and line it up with the first score line in. We're gonna cut away those two outer squares. So these will now fall away. Okay, and then we're gonna come in to that second score line in, and this time we're just gonna cut away that outer square, not the inner square. Okay, so you can see how it's coming together. Got these little guys right here. And then we'll flip the other side, line it up on that outer score line. And I'm just, I can just see my score groove right here or my cutting groove. I'm gonna cut out, lift, cut out those little squares on the outside, go away. And now we're just gonna cut down from that first score intersection. First line it up. Cut and cut. All right. Then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna angle cut these four inner ones. I hope you can see what this looks like. There will be a diagram in the project sheet so you'll be able to see what this piece looks like. So I'm just gonna angle cut these. Just give it a little angle cut. We'll angle cut this one, we'll flip it. Turn it to the other side. Angle cut and turn it. Angle cut. Okay, so let's have a look here. So angle cut here, 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 here on the outer side like that. All right, now we're gonna bring this piece together to form the box. So we wanna fold along all the score lines. Um, actually, it's easier if we go like this, do that. And I'm gonna fold this like this, do that. I'm using the bone folder to help make that fold nice and crisp. I'm using a thick basic white cardstock because that's it's the thickest cardstock we have and it's going to make your box really nice and sturdy. This box is so cute that I think people are gonna keep it and use it to store some things in it. Okay, so if you cut mine the same way then um, as if you cut yours the same way as I cut mine, then these um, the short sides are what we're gonna put the glue on. We're gonna glue these over like this, like this. Then these tabs come in and tuck in, and then these get glued over top on both sides, okay? So if the, your piece looks like mine, then we're gonna come in, we're gonna just first glue that little piece in Use the bone folder to help distribute the glue. Let's do the same thing on the opposite short side. Come in. All right, now we're going to glue this piece. So we're gonna come in like this and then this is gonna fold over like that. So we're gonna put glue on this outer piece went off the edge a little bit, that's okay. We'll clean that off my desk later. So I'm gonna bring this in and I'm kind of pushing in from the sides because I wanna make sure that when this comes together that the corners are nice and square. So I'm just gonna press down to make sure that stays in place. And then I'll come in with my bone folder and just press along there. 
smooth that down to make that fold. All right. And then we'll come in. Smooth that down. And make that fold. All right, so now we can put um, chocolate inside here. If you want to, you can line the bottom of this with designer series paper. Let me tell you how big you should cut that. So I would cut it to two and a quarter inches by maybe four and a quarter, maybe just a bit over four and a quarter inches, but about two, two and a quarter by about four and a quarter inches, I think would be really nice for a liner down at the bottom. I'm leaving mine plain. And then you're just going to pop in your candy. So um, actually, I think I have two of the same candies, but um, I'll grab, also have Snickers in front size. So let's see this. Um, the, these uh, three musketeers are kind of cute because they've got inspirational messages on them like you crushed it and I appreciate you but on the back they have the three musketeers branding so you can use either side so just pop in your candy um, if the ends are a little long you can kind of tuck them in and just bring them down and like look at that isn't that cute you crushed it Okay, so this box is ready for a cover. So let's do the cover next. So we're gonna need two things for the cover. Um, I like to cover uh, my, my cover with some designer series paper. So it's easier for you to glue this on first and then score afterwards. So let me give you the cover measurements. This piece measures seven, a qu seven and a quarter by four and a half. And this piece measures four and a half inches by four inches. So I just wanted to show you real quick what I did for this piece. Um, I used this sheet of paper and you can see that I've already, I cut this length four and a half inches. So the clouds are from the top, so it's four and a half by four. So you can get six out of one sheet of designer series paper, six covers. So this one's from the top, this one's from the middle. And now I'm gonna make one that is from the bottom, which is an all, you can see down here, an all green piece. So if you cut this length four and a half, then um, this can cut four inches, four inches, four inches to make that full 12 inch length up. So um, it's kind of cool. You can use all the different parts of that paper. So this side is four and a half inches um, and this side is four inches. And you just need to glue this to one of the ends. So I'm gonna just really lightly put Tombow on here, but I'm gonna put it all over the cardstock, just a thin stream because I really want this to adhere well. And I'm just gonna line this up with one end. Okay. And in a minute, you'll see how this all works. I'm just gonna press this down so that it's nice and solid. So this is gonna be the side, the top, and another side, okay? And then this will be the bottom of your box and the overlap. All right, let's bring in the scoring board once again. It actually doesn't matter which side you, well, it does matter that it's a long side that you score on, but it doesn't matter if your uh, card stocks, it's like this, or like this because it's symmetrical, okay? So just put one of the long sides up at the top and now we are going to score at the three quarter inch mark, three quarter inch, then um, the three and a quarter inch, the 
four inch mark and the six and a half inch mark. Okay. So we're going to use our bone folder to fold along the score lines. When you're folding over the paper, it's going to be a little stiff, but if you use your bone folder, it's really going to help you make those folds nice and crisp. Okay, so you can see how this box cover is coming together. The one trick with this cover is you want to make sure that this paper stays on top because these two sides are going to overlap. You do not want the white to be on the top after you did all that work to get that nice paper all the way to the edge. So I'm going to, there's my, my front and side. So I'm going to fold over this piece and then we're going to bring this together like this. Okay. So I'll put glue here and we're going to bring this over. So these two end tabs are going to line up. So I'm pressing that back. This is completely flat on my work surface. And now I'm going to press down with my bone folder and just make sure those two pieces are really nice and they come together. And there we go, we've got the really cute cover coming together. And where did my chocolates go? Aha, here we go. So we'll slide this on now. Okay, and then we're going to grab um, some ribbon and we're just going to tie it on over on one side. ourselves enough room. Do a knot. I'm going to use my locking tweezers to lock that first knot and then we're going to come through and as I'm coming through doing that second knot I'm making sure to twist this ribbon so that the ombre, the dark ombre is going to face up. Okay. And then just tighten that out. Grab my ribbon scissors and we'll just cut off these pieces on an angle. This is the balmy blue and this ribbon is so soft. Balmy blue and white ribbon. And I have to tell you, normally I don't love ribbon that is this wide, but this ribbon is very thin and very soft and it ties really nicely. So I don't know, most ribbon that's this thick is not my cup of tea or this wide, but this one um, is a winner in my book. So don't hesitate getting this ribbon because it's very pretty. It's got um, that beautiful ombre look, balmy blue and white. So, okay, I've got that situated over to the far left now. And the cool thing about this paper is that it actually has a sheet, actually two sheets of this paper that has these characters on them that you can actually die cut with the dies in the Playing in the Rain bundle. Um, there's other options. You can get the paper and you can just freehand cut out these characters if you want. Or if you want to keep making these boxes forever and ever in the future, make sure you get the bundle because you can you can stamp and color these exactly like the paper. Um, I just want to show you, I we're going to do the bunny rabbit this time, but I wanted to show you what I did with um, the turtle. So one of these turtles, the one in my right hand right here, was one that I stamped and colored. The one on my left hand is one that I die cut out of the paper. And you can see they look pretty similar, so you can really make them look the same by coloring them, by stamping and coloring them. But if you don't have a lot of time, if you want to make one quickly, cut your character right out of the paper and then you can make this super quick. 
All right, let's grab. I, I decided to die cut this bunny. And so I, I actually did that a little earlier. I, I die cut it out. Um, one thing um, when, when you're die cutting, you can use our mini stamp and cut and emboss machine with that and this boho blue one you can get that on a starter kit right now um, there's two starter kits um, both of them um, the the base price starter kit is $99 and you get $175 worth of product. But if you choose the other starter kit, um, the one that's $129, you can get the $175 in your starter kit plus you get this um, mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. You can choose either the boho blue color or the original white color. So um, these dies in here, they all um, they all will go through this machine right here. So it's definitely um, one that you could use um, together. And also the same thing with the best butterflies. They can all go through the machine. So if you're new to stamping, um, this machine might be a good one to start off with because um, it's, well, you can get it on your starter kit um, for a super good price plus $175 worth of products. So you could get the bundle, one of the bundles, you could get both of the bundles, um, some ink, some card stuff, and you could go to town making a lot of these bo boxes. Okay, so I die cut this little guy out. And so he's gonna be on, on here. And then I also wanted to make a little cloud bubble. So let's grab this and I'm going to use the Oh Happy Day stamp. I'll just put this on a, this is a B block. And we're just going to ink this up and stamp it down. And I am going to use the Cloud Punch. This is in the annual catalog. And I am going to, I think that ear is kind of big, so I'm gonna put Oh Happy Day over towards the right side and punch that out. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think that will look good. You can put it like that. And then you can add the little bunny. So let me put that away. And it's kind of this with this little bunny it kind of looks also like an Easter project too let me put this down here and I'm going to just keep that there for a second and we're gonna add some glue to the cloud and tuck that in there first and then I'm going to add my bunny afterwards just to make sure I get the cloud in the right spot Isn't he cute? So cute. The turtle's really cute too, but does not look sweet. And then if you want to, um, oh, did they go? I had my daisies over here earlier, but let's see. Oh shoot, I don't know where they went to. If I find them in a moment, I also added some of the loose daisies onto my cloud, but I have, they are, they are missing in action. I've got a lot of things on this desk today because I've got two projects going on. So I don't see them right at the moment. They're gone. But you can add just with a little dab of glue, just add some daisies onto here just to kind of make it look super cute. So I just want to show you, these are kind of how I use the paper. So the paper had clouds at the top, kind of uh, clouds and daisies, and then just daisies at the bottom. So you can use um, all parts of that paper and they still look cute no matter which part of the paper that you choose. Okay, I think I've talked enough about 
the slider box. I think I've done everything we need for the slider box. So now I need to show you how to make the matching screen card or just make a screen card because these screen cards are just so much fun to make and to give. They are a simple wow card. It won't take you very long at all. So just to point out, I've got a piece of cardstock. This piece measures eight and a quarter, eight and a quarter, not eight and a half, eight and a quarter by five and a half. So almost a normal cardstock base that you would normally have, except this side is eight and a quarter, and then the other side's five and a half. Okay, so we are going to score this piece. Let me grab my measurements on my project sheet so I'm telling you everything correctly. You will love my project sheet this time. It's two pages and it's just full of stuff. All right, so put the eight and a quarter inch side up at the top and we're going to score at the two and three quarter inch mark and the five and a half inch mark. Two and three quarters and five and a half. All right. So now this piece, we're going to fold along the score line like a Z. So let me show you. So it looks like this zigzag. Okay, one goes in one direction and the other goes in the other direction. Then we're going to bring out the very best trio punch. And I'll show you how to create the look of the screen. So I've got one of the pieces folded over, okay? And I've got my punch situated like this. I'm not gonna move this punch. We're always gonna come in from the bottom and punch the corner like this. It's easiest with this punch to punch standing up and using the palm of your hand. Okay, so we're punching through two uh, layers of cardstock and punch down. So we're going to create that first punch at the top. Then I'm going to come over here, fold this over, and we'll do our second punch. Okay? And then we'll punch the corners. But we're not going to turn like this. We're always going to keep it like this because if we turned it, I just want to show you. Let me grab a piece of, kind of a square piece. Yeah, I'll show you. Okay, so um, if I take this piece, okay, and I do this, and if I turn it like this and do it this direction, um, the turns are going to be different. Okay, so it's going to have a different look. So you always want to do the same direction. Otherwise, it's it's not going to match up on the other side. It's just a very um, subtle difference. This is like going out <laughs> instead of in. And so and this one's in instead of out. So um, just keep that in mind that you want to um, keep them coming in the same direction. Okay. So then we're going to come in. This is the lasting label punch from the annual catalog. And we're going to fold over again. So we're punching through two. This time we're coming in the bottom. We're going to make the legs of the screen. We're going to slide this in just until you see those two little points right there that stick out. You're going to level it. Make sure they're lined up. Then you're going to look, does this look equal on either side of here? And once it does, you're going to punch through. You're punching through two pieces of cardstock. Okay, so you've got that look. And now you're going to fold over the other side and you're going to use that as the template to come down. So I'm just going to pull this down until I see that line disappear sure it's a little even and then I'm going to punch that so that way they all line up and then you've got the bottom of your card and it's truly a fun beautiful card um, I made a lot of these and um, they they weren't too bad to make on mass so a great card for 
um, if you have to make a lot and you want a simple wow. All right, so now we need some paper panels and I'm going to use that playing in the rain paper again. And you're going to need three panels to put on your card. They all measure two and a half, make sure I got that right, yeah, two and a half by four and three quarters. So I'm gonna use two, they go like this. <laughs> See, there's the pig in the center. Um, I'm gonna use two designer series paper panels and one basic white panel. And you can do all three designer series paper if you want to, but this last panel I'm gonna use to write on. So you can actually take two of these. I have found that with the designer series paper, and if you're layering with our regular weight um, paper, you could actually punch through two layers at the same time. So I'm just gonna do the corners for these. So I'm gonna do that. And then I, remember, I'm gonna flip over to the other side so I have that same corner, okay? And then those are gonna glue here. And if I had another one for another card, I would double these up and do them both at the same time because it can actually punch through two layers pretty easily, just as long as you're standing up. Okay, so then um, for this one, I use this greeting here, rainy days are better with you and the flowers. And we'll just, oop, we'll put this one on here and this one on here. Before I glue this down, I always like to stamp first because if I make a mistake, I can always turn the piece of paper over. So I'm just going to ink this up in Memento Tuxedo ink and just stamp this down here. By the way, if you're looking for Memento Black, that ink pad will be back in stock in March. It is out of stock right now, but you can always use a different ink color. Let me know if you need a recommendation. I'm always happy to help um, with substitutions. Okay, and we're gonna come in to color that. You can use Daffodil Delight blends. I'm gonna use the dark just hitting the petals with the bullet tip real quick. It's quite easy just to add, layer on some color. And that just makes that last panel look just a little bit better. Um, when I did the best butterflies one, I, I stamped a butterfly. So you can just choose whatever you want to do. You could also do um, one of the the characters like the um, the turtle or the bunny you could put that on the last panel if you wanted to too but that's just kind of a cute way to finish this off and you could like then write a little message on here or if you wanted to you could put another designer series paper panel and you could have that on the back side so there's options to decorate this up and I'm just going to use some glue and add this onto here and there is about when you're gluing this on there's about an eighth of an inch on the top and the two sides and you're gluing this together so just super fun, fun card. I love this combination. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you how to package it up and you're gonna think this is a really cool way to package it up for in-person giving. All right, and then I tied a little bow earlier and you can just add that on here with, I would use tear and tape. Yeah, I like this side better. So just, grab some tear and tape and put it on the back loops of your bow. This is the same ribbon that I used um, for the box. And then if you can get it started, press it down. 
and then peel off the backing. It really does help if you press it down first. Okay. And then we'll just add this. And I kind of just look for a spot where there isn't like a little animal and that's where I pop it. So I could either maybe put it up top here. I'm kind of covering my turtle then. So maybe I'll just put it here. You don't have to put it on the same spot for every card. Peeling this just a little bit, different direction. Okay. Yeah, and so then you can just go ahead and um, we can put this into a little cellophane bag. So Stampin' Up! sells these six by eight inch cellophane bags. And what I did was I took um, a bag, found which side it opens on, this side, and then I cut that side down two inches. So now this is a six by six cellophane bag. And then what you can do is fold your card up and slide it in just part way. I'm gonna slide it in just so I got most of my card in. And then you can take one of your boxes and just kind of place it on top and then you shimmy it, get it over top of that bow, shimmy it over top and slide it in. And then you can fold this over and tape it. Now it is packaged. It's got both a card so you can put a cute little message inside there and you've got the box all wrapped up and now you can leave it somewhere. You can leave it on a desk and you you can feel like it's like not gonna get damaged by like the elements or you could put it in someone's um, post uh, a box. Um, you know, if you're delivering it the neighborhood, you don't have to worry about, you know, will it get wet in the rain because it's kind of sealed up. Um, at, or you can leave it on someone's desk and when they open it up, there's that cute little card because this is kind of inconspicuous. You can't really tell that there's a card in here right now, right? So it's super, super cute. Um, so anyway, I wanted to share with you how to package that up into like a really cute package. So let's take a look at some alternatives. So we've got this screen card with this box. We've got this one made with the best butterflies. Look at that gorgeous butterfly and the greeting, all the love, and then sending good vibes. Like this is just like a really happy, happy box. Like both of them are really cute, right? This one's really kind of like pastel spring colors. This one's kind of more bold and bright and beautiful. Um, then, you know, if you're just making regular thank you cards, this one right here using the Regency Park Designer Series paper. I also made the screen cards with, look at this gorgeous paper bundle. Let me grab that, I'll share with you what that is. This is one of our celebration reward papers. So if you spend $50, you could choose this one. This one is the Dainty Flowers Designer Series paper. And I cut this one up. Look how pretty those are with the Dainty Flowers Designer Series paper. It's just so beautiful. So there's lots of options for the screen card. You're gonna have so much fun with these boxes, filling them with fun size candy. Just make sure you look for the fun size. Maybe you can even find a multi-pack with the fun size. I could only find individuals at my store, but my store is pretty small. Um, but look for the, the words fun size for your, your candy and then just, isn't that sweet? Like just so cool to have a whole bunch of different ones or say you had someone that loved Butterfingers. You could do all Butterfingers, right? So you can really customize it to the person. I hope you really enjoyed this project. I'm coming back over to you. So I am gone this Friday, but I will be back next Friday 
Friday. So I'll be live with you then. I hope you enjoyed this project. Don't forget the best deal right now during celebration is the starter kit. And um, when you get the starter kit, you are part of my team as well. Um, you don't need to do classes. You can be a hobbyist and just enjoy getting the discount and being part of the greater Stampin' Up! community and being part of my team. So that is the, the best deal of them all. But if you want to just make a purchase, then um, make sure you use my host code and then you can get my free gift of the month. You can get a celebration reward and then you can make fun projects for your friends and family. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. If you like my YouTube channel, if you like these videos, make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And if you want, leave me a comment down below if you have a question or if you wanna let me know what you thought of this project, um, please leave me a comment down below. Have a great weekend, everyone. Take care, bye-bye.